overflows. Who drives greater pleasure from an act of union with each other, man or a woman? This question was asked by Yudhishthir in Mahabharat. It was narrated in the Dan Dharm Parv of Anushana Parv in Mahabharat. Before I go into it is important to inquire who can answer such a question? Yudhishthir asks this question from Bhishma, who had taken a vow to remain unmarried. He had no children. And it was mentioned in the Mahabharata by a sage Veda Vyas. How does this process take place? Veda Vyas is a sage, although he was married and he had the office springs. When he got married to Vatika, Sudh Struk was born and there are other stories also. It is like when you are going to plant a seed and you want a higher quality of the final product you have to get a hybrid seed of a high quality seed hybrid seed when we transform into the language of spirituality it is a seed with higher consciousness or you can say god consciousness and for that kind of a seed a different kind of a soil has to be prepared the extra fertilization different quality of the fertilization is to be provided this process is known as the preparing the womb for seed to be planted two things are important the quality and the nature of the womb that means at the time of conception what is the nature of the mother who and what is her preparation for the womb and the seed so in most of the cases the seed has to be of a higher quality higher consciousness Conception is an interaction between heaven and earth. Heaven means the higher consciousness and earth element that provides the roots for the seed to grow and it holds the roots of the plant when it starts growing. And during the time of autumn, all the leaves from the outer surface fall and it is the roots that continue to support the tree providing the nourishment during that period of hibernation. This is the time when the fetus is growing parallel, fetus is growing in the womb. The how the nourishment is provided to the tree is parallel to the nutrition that is provided by the to the fetus in the womb so for that in the birth of Jesus there is a concept of Holy Ghost it is a very relevant concept Holy Ghost represents the higher consciousness or God consciousness but it has to be given a manifestation. Joseph was simply an instrument for the act to be performed at the physical level. Mary was the one, that is why we call it Jesus was born out of an immaculate conception. She was virgin. Virgin means 
her consciousness was very fertile to invite a higher consciousness of God consciousness to be born as Jesus for the resurrection of humanity. For the resurrection of humanity. So she is considered as virgin. And after Jesus was born, the only time we hear of Joseph is when because of the fear that King Herod in the kingdom of Judea had decided to kill all the children below the age of two, then it is reported that Joseph and Mary escaped from that kingdom to a safer place. After that, there is no mention as far as I am concerned of Joseph. Mary, Jesus and Mary are together. Children are more connected, find affinity with the mother. This is how all the higher consciousness were born. When I take the life of Lalaji, I will explain his father Chaudhary Harbakshrai was the physical father, but the consciousness in Ramchandra Lalaji was that of Nakshbandi Tarikat or God consciousness, the highest consciousness, but it manifested through Hazrat Abul Hasan Nasirabadi, who made the prediction that someone from Hindu religion will come, they will be the true inheritor for this spiritual wealth. So it is that consciousness. And who was the foster father of Lalaji? Was Shah Abdul Ghan, Shah Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan was the foster father because his mother has already passed away when Lalaji was seven years of age. So when we come to this, this is a topic which cannot be explained, yet still it is explained by the awakened ones. For those who are ready, who have to conceive or bring higher consciousness in the world for the resurrection of humanity. So this is story that the question that Yudhishthir had asked Bhishma who was not married and the story also goes totally different way. Veda Vyas was the son of sage Parasha and the fisher woman Satyavati. It is said Satyavati used to row the boat and once Parashar had to reach for a yachna and he was in a hurry, so Satyavati helped him to cross the river to reach the other side. So out of this interaction or union, sage Vedavyas was born. Satyavati, in the later part of his part, when King Shantanu was in the forest, he was already had a son in the name of Bhishma, whose initial name was Devadatta. And he was born out of the union between Shantanu and Ganga, which is the manifested form of holy river Ganga. These stories are not just meaningful, they carry a deeper message at a much higher level of consciousness. They are simply to help the complicated matters which cannot be explained by ordinary human consciousness. So Parashar was a saint, sage, he was of a higher consciousness constantly dwelling in that consciousness and Satyavati was the earth element 
with the interaction or union between the heaven and earth, the heaven element in parasha and the earth element in satyavati, sage Veda Vyas was born, who composed 18 Puranas, Upanishads. Upanishads are part of the Puranas, the 18 Puranas, the other commentaries, Mahabharat, the longest epic, Bhagavad Gita and many other things. So it is Veda Vyas who wrote this story in response to the question that was asked by Yudhishthir to Bhish. So Yudhishthir was a man the, who asked the question. Bhishma responds him. He was unmarried, no offspring. He was a sage in his own right. Veda Vyas who wrote, he was a saint between the heaven and the earth element, the union of that. For the interaction, for the transformation of human consciousness, these kinds of souls are responsible and they are born in a specific manner. Be it Buddha, be it Ubaidullah Ehrar, be it Ramakrishna, be it Lalaji, and then when it comes to Brij Mohanlal, his father, Raghavad Dayal Chachaji, was already higher consciousness. He could have bring, the, he has brought the other two children, but their level of understanding and consciousness was not at the level of Brij Mohanlal. Because Brij Mohanlal was born out of the prayer of Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan, it was the Fazl Ahmad Khan so it is the consciousness, absolute consciousness that manifested, that assumed the form of, became the seed through Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan. And then, so the consciousness of Maulana Fazl Ahmad Khan, the Naqshbandi Tariqat, that of Raghubar Dayal and his wife, who had provided the earth element. So there is a vast difference between the consciousness and the work that was performed by Brij Mohanlal and his other brother Radha Mohanlal and Jyotindra Mohan. There is a vast difference. And that difference comes because of the consciousness that assumed the human form as Brij Mohanlal was of a, that a different quality. Sometimes you will notice children are born out of the same parentage, but their quality, understanding, even at the normal life differs from that of others. When I look at it, my own life, my other brothers and sisters, they are of a totally different understanding than I have. Because I, through me, a different kind of work has to be performed, whereas the physical parents of all the brothers and sisters is the same, but the consciousness differs. The, in the life of Brijmohanlal, his consciousness differed from that of other to his brothers, Lalaji, this will need to be explained again in a greater details when I am speaking on the life of Ramchandra Lalaji, Rasyadlatala Unu. At the moment, it is the question which Yudhishthir asks, who drives greater pleasure from an act of union with each other, man or a woman, enough? now.